Hello, and welcome to Making Interactive NFTs. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at Shaman. 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 <laughs> so hopefully uh, your, your great-grandfather isn't a shaman, and I'm not going to run into sort of these uh, politically incorrect uh, issues. But um, this was my vision of a shaman from what I grew up watching Scooby-Doo and various things like that. So whatever, it's an artistic vision. I don't mean to imply that all shaman look like this. <clears throat> all right, well, with that uh, intro, let us take a look at what this looks like. Why don't we open it up here? Whoosh, wah, wah, doo -doo -wah. shaman. Boom, boom, boom. How do I close this? Ah, there we go. Let's see, that was a new window. All right, so we've got a bunch of iterations here. Doop, 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 doop. These have been created, some people putting them up for sale, but it's not sold out yet, so you have an opportunity to collect here for a, a Tazel. And let's go see how this was made in Zim. So we'll reduce this down. And here's our code here. Shaman. We have a directory, and inside that are our scripts, our local scripts. There's our zim. And then we've zipped up the index in our scripts there. Uh, we didn't, uh, those are a set of pictures that we <clears throat> screen captured for promotional purposes. And we had an art opening. Actually, we've got an art opening coming up at the Pagoda Scope on Wednesday. We just hung that in VR, in virtual reality, so that's pretty cool. We have done other bubbling, or no, other um, videos uh, about how this FX hash stuff here works. So we'll put a link to that in the YouTube video. There's one based on rarity, and that's what's happening here. Our rarity this time as they're going to provide a couple pallets, or at least one, two, three, four, five, six pallets, it looks like. So these are the collections of colors that we've chosen with a top secret method. <laughs> it's actually based on some other work that we were doing for uh, Eccentric. That was another NFT. And we made a bunch of colored rings, and we really liked the colored rings and the way that they turned out, so we just sampled some of those for palettes, the ones we thought would look good for Shaman. There is, once again, a video about rarity in that rarity. It also talks about if we want to pass an array, we'll need to pass it as no pick, uh, and the reasons behind that and stuff. But anyway, we're basically saying that these are the odds that we want to pick these, and therefore this orphan one. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're telling a story. We're imagining these shamans sort of um, represent various archetypes. So those are actually archetypes, I think, Jungian archetypes. But anyway, um, that's uh, we were just looking for six archetypes of sorts, and there they are because we had six pallets. <laughs> yeah. Okay, whatever. But uh, we get to tell a bit of a, a story, and same with the age. So if we let it go for longer, this is time. These are the odds. This is going to be time in seconds. If we let the shaman run for longer, then it has more lines, and we're considering it ancient. If, we, if it's shorter, it will have less, uh, less drawing, and we call that apprentice. And so that's our, our range there of ages. And then here's what we're passing to FX hash. And you can see the results of that down below here. Uh, I think we can. If we were to open up any or indeed hit the filter. So maybe that's the easiest way. So here's the filter and there's the hexes. We've had seven warriors, one wanderer, two orphans, two, one innocent, and altruists are like four of them. The duos, we've got 14 falses. So astral is... Um, I think astral is if the eyes are wide open. So you see, uh, can you see that one right there? How, which one is it now? This one has the eyes wide open rather than, oh, and that one does two eyes wide open, but then there's lids. So astral is when it's got its eyes wide open. So only three of those have, and then the rest are not. And irises, um, irises, you can't see because we're not zoomed in enough on this, but there's little black lines going to for the pupils. Let's uh, zoom in on one and see if it has irises or not. 
yeah, these little sort of gray, not black, but gray, gray lines. That's um, the irises. And on each one, by the way, you get the rarity that's come up. So astral was most common, so this wasn't very rare because of that. All of them have their irises. So we, we have yet to see any that have no iris. So those, are, those odds haven't been hit yet, I guess. And then you get a total of the rarity there. So that's what we're doing here is we're uh, preparing the rarity. And you see that the odds here, so we've got Zim odds, that's 10% this will be true. So 10% will be astral. 90% will have irises. We've hit two of the ones or no, three of the ones out of the bunch of them there, 17 or whatever, are astral, but we have yet to hit hit these odds, even though they're really the same odds, aren't they? Okay, and in that case, we can put the answer to that, it will be a true or false, and we can put it right in here, uh, these two right here, and it will say iris true or astral false or what have you. And the age, we're passing in, we've, we've chosen the make primitive, and we talked about that in the rarity video as well. So we have to make sure that we make this object literal here a primitive, otherwise we're receiving number and string objects, as in from the new string, as opposed to a string primitive. Okay, well we're building, we often zog that just to make sure that these are, are looking good. But then once we are ready to publish, we comment that out. We have a new Zim frame. We're making it square and black in the background. <coughs> Excuse me, black in the um, frame as well. So I'm going to open this up in Browser Plus. So we decided, even though sometimes on occasion these might go outside, the pen is might go outside. Um, when that happens, it's sometimes nice to have a color on the edge there. So let's just put the color on the edge, like darker. Now when I refresh here, you can see that we've got the color on the edge and there's the square bit. So if we were to refresh this a bunch of times, it's possible, ooh, that one almost hit the edge, that it would go over the edge. If it does go over the edge, uh, I'm not sure, we may have worked it out so it didn't, but oh, but the thing is we're randomly sort of moving around in this space, plus these lines are getting thicker and thinner as they go, you see, thin and thick. So it might be possible, I don't know, we didn't pay too much attention to the edge, but we got it roughly in there. Um, if you are going to go across the edge, it doesn't look very good if this is black and that's black, because then you get this line that gets chopped in a sense, you don't know why it's chopped. If we do have a frame in a sense, or like the um, the edge showing here, then you understand, okay, this has gone off the edge, but it, it's because this is you know, not part of the picture. So we prefer that, but uh, it was staying on there just fine, mostly, as far as I can remember. Oh, look, aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, that just got chopped a little bit at the bottom there. And if this were black, it might not look quite as good here. It's sort of understandable what's going on. But when we go to the black here, uh, it might not be quite as understandable if you see sort of a chop, but I don't even know if you'd recognize it. However, we thought that was impressive enough, like so. So those are those palettes that are coming in. And other things are going on, like the, the length of time. And how are we doing this? So we this is all template pretty well, this stuff. And we're making a pen. So the pen is using a series based on the payload of archetype. So archetype is the, the um, palette here. So there's the palette. And say it chooses innocent, then it's going to use this palette right here. Well, we're passing the payload this is the payload on this side, this array, basically. We're passing that into, and by the way, just, just this is also a payload right here. This is a payload, payload. It doesn't have to be a no pick. So it's not like this is the payload. It's really this whole thing is the payload. Um, the payload is a ZIMV value, which means if we just pass in an array 
here as the payload, it would pick randomly from the array. So instance, for instance, if we say 3.5 3 here, then this is the payload, but the payload would be would pick one of those two things. And that can be handy sometimes, all right? Uh, however, here, we don't want to pick one of these things. We actually want the whole array as a payload, and that's the no picking. Sorry to describe that again. The idea behind having a video specifically for rarity and things like that is that we don't have to keep on describing it as, as we go forward. Uh, but yeah, just a little bit there, just so you know. All right, so we're, we're picking here and we're taking that array and we're passing it into a series because a series can accept either a series of individual colors, like uh, this is a series, const s is equal to a new, um, actually it's just series like this, it's a function. So series uh, red, green, blue, like that. That would pick in order. It would, every time the pen goes to make a color, it would go red. The first bar, that bar would be red. This would be green, that would be blue. The next one would be red, green, blue. And we could make this a series. But you can see we, that that's not the case. This is random. It's randomly picking from that set of colors. It's not a series. I don't know if you can really tell, but let's see. Where's a nice easy place? I was gonna try and show you two greens in a row. Oh, it is a series though, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Right, it is a series. So that's why there is no two colors in a row. Um, so what we've done is instead of passing in the payload directly, which would mean it picks randomly from them, we're going to do a series, which means it will be red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. So series can be either like that, or you can pass in a single parameter that is an array, and then it will just use that array as the series. So that's what we're doing in this case. Let's adjust that though, shall we? Since we're talking about it down here. Boop, bop, 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 bop. Where was it? It's in the top of the pen. So that's the payload and we passed it into a series. If we didn't pass it into the series, that means we're passing an array in there. In which case, we won't get a series, we'll get random colors. So now when we look at this, ooh, that's a long one. Um, it's no longer a series. Can we see any two colors in a row? Yeah, look at those oranges are right nearby one another. These two oranges right here. There's two yellows in a row. So it's just randomly picking colors. Let's have a look at it again. That's random. Blue, blue, and blue. And there's another blue, etc. Versus a series. Like that. And then we don't see that. It will always be... Uh, yellow, blue, orange, brown, that's a, probably a different color, orange, tan, lighter blue, and then it starts here. So see this color right here? Next color is yellow, then blue. Mm -hmm. Yellow, then blue. So it's a series as it goes. That's that's the whole palette right there until it hits. the. Okay, so uh, we're passing that into the pen, and the reason why it even looks like this at all is because it's kite tail. If we didn't choose a type, then it would be line. And here's what line looks like. It looks cool too. So a line just tries to make a line of the colors. And the reason why it's changing size is because we're animating the size scale to 150. So if we don't animate, I guess comment out all the animate like that. Oh, some comment that was. Okay, if we don't animate the line scale, then, <laughs> right? Shaman. Perhaps we would want our size to be a little bit bigger than that. So if we had a size of, say, 20. Cool. Okay, that's what the pen looks like if we're not animating the scale of it. So every time it, it tries to go to draw it, we're saying, change the color, change the color, change the color, change the color, change the color. <laughs> and that's what's happening there. So normally, it, you know, a color doesn't look like that. And if we just said red, it would be a red line. And that's what we would end up seeing. Okay. But, uh, and if it were red line and we animated, here's what we would end up seeing. 
Okay, let's change that size. Back to two, was it? Mm -hmm. We can also set the alpha of that, and that might look uh, you know, a, a bit better. This is what it looks like with kite tails. So kite tails, uh, like that. And here's what kite tail looks like without animating the size. Shall we start with the bigger size? Okay, so kite tail, uh, how about even bigger? Kite tail looks like um, uh, a line right there that keeps on going, but it's got just these sort of rectangles on it, like so. Okay, I better undo that. Hmm. I could say. There we go. So we kind of jumped ahead a little bit, but in general, okay, first of all, we're also not, uh, usually we can move stuff. So this thing that I'm drawing, I can pick it up if I can find it. There it is. I made two copies of it, so I can only pick up the one that is the actual pen, and then we're cloning it, and the clone doesn't have a drag on it. All right, so normally we can pick up pieces of pen, so we don't want to pick up the pen, therefore move false. We're starting with a small size, and then we're animating the scale. By the way, that's 150 times. That's not like 1.5 scale. That's 150 times as big. We're adding damping to the pen, a specific one to make it how we want. If we had very low damping, like 0 0.01 or something like that, then it didn't work out very well because it, as we're moving this thing around, we're animating this thing around at a certain speed, that was too slow. So how about 0.1? It'll be closer. but it still sort of makes something smaller. If we don't have any damping, that's one. And the lines aren't quite as smooth. It just almost goes to every single bend, it hits a, hits a line. It's not that different though than, than what we did, but it's a combination of our wiggle speed. So here's our time that we're spending wiggling. So if we wiggled from one to five seconds, for instance, funny. <laughs> We're getting a, a completely different effect, aren't we? So this is a longer time of wiggling, but what's the issue? The issue is we're cutting off at the time out here is the payload. So let's time out at 10 seconds and see what we get. Now it will draw for longer. It's kind of a boring wiggle, that one. It was more like just back and forth. It looks like some strange octopus candy wrapper thing. So here's our wiggle that's looking a little bit more. So the problem is we're, we're, uh, interesting, <laughs> neat. Uh, it's sort of funny how the eyes happen. Like we were doing this and it was an okay pattern. And then we mirrored it because sometimes mirror can add beauty to it. Uh, and it was still okay, but then as soon as we popped some eyes on there, it was like, oh yeah, okay, there we go. Now that's what we've done. Um, anyway, so we're not we're not moving the pen fast enough. The the pen is animating in and out too much. So we've got too much ease. Let's see. So where our ease go? Okay, our our damping's fine. What was it? Uh, the time here is too fast. What if we set this to two? That will lengthen those. Yeah, there we go. That lengthens the the size animation. That's pretty nice. Okay, I'll try that again. We so we're always getting ten here. It looks like we could increase the scale of that a little bit, huh? And still get something pretty nice. So that's the size factor. What if we went to like a 250? It's not 
moving fast enough. Right, because we, we set it to be sometimes 0.5. So let's kind of go 0.5 there, point, point 0.5 there, and how about to 2? And so we're increasing the speed of that, and that will make it a little bit more dynamic. I suppose it does. But do you see what, what's happening with the easing of that? It's almost like this thing's got corners. It's like... Wah, wah, wah. So you see, and there's the cutoff that we were talking about before. So the other issue is this is cutting off and both the edge and the top because it's got no damping. It allows the like as as the wiggle is moving. So the wiggle is just kind of moving the pen around. The pen is catching up right away because the damping is basically no damping. We do have damping where there's damping in the wiggle. So this has some damping built into it. But anyway, if we damp back to point 2 here, then you'll see that the corners aren't as um the corners aren't as sharp anymore. So our speed most of the corners are rounded corners. But it still looks like uh there it got cut off. So hmm, let's see damp at point 2. Let's damp at point 1. So that just depends on the speed problem is is we've increased the speed here and now that's going off the edge what else was causing it to go off the edge though Ooh, that kind of looks like that. that's fairly nice it's got a long time to it so it's making quite complex patterns anyway this isn't exactly an explorer an explorer a zim explorer is a series where we try out different things like this this is more how was this made but we did do a little bit of exploring because the pen is quite uh, magnificent. There is uh, here, let me just pop into a browser on Zim, the Zim site here. One sec, go right back I'm just full screen again. So on the Zim site here under examples is this one right here called Gen Pen. Blur, 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 blur. I'm just hit there, Gen Pen. And Gen Pen is a way, there we are drawing with the kite tail, for instance. And it's got these layers where we can draw things at different layers. We can draw different types. There's a city. Uh, here's grass. So we could have made it with grass if we wanted to. That's grass. There's all sorts of custom pens that you can do to practice your animating. We found that animating these properties was so amazing and we were able to do wonderful things with it that we made a tool to let people animate the, um, the pen properties. So there's a variety of things. So you can either wiggle or animate. You can um, choose different ways to apply scales, different types of easings and damping settings and speed settings on all of these. Make your own presets. Save the preset with uh, one of these, a plus sign. And that will save the preset to down here. And then you can have more presets on the bottom. Okay. All right. Uh, but you can also animate the pen. I think we already looked at the pen, and I may have shown you Gen Pen. There was another one of these series that we did called, uh, let's see, what was that called? The Lepton Lamp Lords on Tia, where we just animated a straight line, but changed the various parameters of how we animated that line. Um, even though it was straight, like how quickly we animated scales to make different types of lamps lords <laughs> lamp lords <laughs> all right here we're animating the pen with a wiggle whoosh 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 making um different types of shaman okay so i think we better undo that again probably just bring it right back to the beginning i think yeah. okay so it's just right back to the beginning so there's some stuff uh we're wiggling that across the stage width and the stage height and that's what's uh, causing the pen to, to sweep about there. We're back to normal. Looks like that one, yeah, that one just cut off, did it? Oh, it's close, but the cutoff isn't the end of the world with this. It's, you know, I can't quite tell, but that one did just hit the edge. <clears throat> Here's how long we're waiting. We're waiting whatever the age's payload is. So if we take a look up here, there's the age. We're saying, is this percentage in this case? 10, 20, uh, that's 30. No, not quite. So you don't have to add up to 100. It's basically just saying 10 out of 30, 70, 10 out of 80, it's going to be this one. 20 out of 80, it's going to be that one. 
I usually do like to add it up. In this case, I didn't. <laughs> I don't know why. So that's uh, when you, when it comes to rarity, you probably want to have one that's normal, and that normal one should probably look the best. You you want your projects to look the best the most most of the time. I don't think there's any harm in the things being rare not necessarily looking the best, but maybe looking a bit strange. So for instance, in this time, if it has a lot, it's very you know, complex, that's ancient, only 10 of them are going to be like that out of, out of 80, and only 10 of them out of 80 are going to be very slim, or as in not very many things, and just uh, yeah, sort of more quick, it finishes quicker. And the reason why it finishes quicker is because of this payload right here that we're passing along. So that's going to run for four seconds. This is going to run for one second. We're choosing one of those from Rarity. And that basically gives us this word that we use in here, age. So it will be this word. But the payload is the value that is associated with that. And the payload is coming down here, doing this right here. That's how long we're, we're waiting, the results of that payload. At that point, we stop animating. That the stop animate is a is global. If we put IDs in here, so we could put IDs in here if we wanted to, and stop only certain IDs. Or we could have indeed, because this is all on the pen, we could have said pen stop animate like that, and that would stop all animations on the pen since only our animations are on the pen. I think that's good. But uh, there we go. That's even faster. We just stopped all animations. We told the pen to stop itself, and that turns the pen off. Otherwise, the pen will probably uh, finish its ease to get to the end. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe we would have wanted it to finish its ease, but anyway, that just chops it, stops it. And then pen.paper is the um, actual pen drawings. So we're cloning the drawing. You can't, you can't just clone the pen. The pen is the system. It's a, it's, pen is a control. So if you look at the Zim site here, under docs, oh, that's a special occurrence. One out of 100 times, it just starts us in on the puzzle. Sort of interrupts our flow and just starts to hit that. And we're onto the docs. Normally, if I hit the docs, it opens the docs. But one out of 100 times, it will run the puzzle for you. <laughs> yeah, you should feel lucky. Um, and that puzzle, by the way, is right here. It is in uh, an NFT as well. And it is overlaid now on the page. So if I do that, it doesn't change the page. It's just like, that's Z this is Zim right here in the banner. And then we're also, when we click this, we're opening up Zim on top of the HTML page. And now we're hiding that again, or closing it. So um, that's kind of a neat use of Zim, huh? In a banner, pop it up and you get a nice display. All right, what was I looking for though? This is the docs. We came to the docs for what reason? Let's have a look here. Pen.paper, does that have anything to do with that? Can't remember now. <laughs> what were we talking about? Uh, time out, pen.paper. We're cloning it, pen.paper. Oh, controls, right. Yeah, I was trying to explain that um, we have display objects. So here's a bunch of display objects right here. Those are the base display objects like bitmaps and shapes and containers and stuff. Then custom shapes made from that. So those are the Zim shapes that are made from that. Then a whole bunch of components. These are display objects, things that we can see. The pen itself, if we come on down, and these are the methods that are common to all those display objects. Okay, They were added in Zim 4th. They're called the Zim 4th methods because we, we started off as merely a library to apply those methods to create JS objects. Then, since we had made our own bunch of objects, uh, we switched it up and made those all methods rather than functions. So they do run as functions, but they, they are also methods that have all been applied to the Zim objects. And we did that in Zim 4, in Zim 4th, that is, as in version 4, what's called Zim 4th. So those are Zim 4th methods, but underneath that we have controls. These are traditionally things that aren't necessarily display objects. Some of them are, but rather they um, control or they operate on display objects. So a tile 
has a bunch of objects inside it. A tile is itself a display object, and so is a wrapper, I think, but some of these things are not. Um, and that includes the pen. Where do we get to the pen? So here's the pen right here. The pen itself isn't a display object. It um, operates on some paper, uh, and that has a bunch of shapes in it and stuff like that. So the pen has a paper, and it is that paper that we're cloning. Okay, if we clone the pen, that would give us another pen that would start drawing. If we clone the paper, that, that um, clones what was made. Same with emitter. Emitter is the same kind of thing right here. The emitter has a particles display object. The emitter itself isn't a display object. I don't think it is. Let's have a look. Uh, it says right here, extends a ZIM container. Okay, so it is. So it is itself a container. Uh, what about the pen? Let's have a look at pen. Extends a ZIM container. It is itself a container. So for purposes, uh, sort of unusual purposes, pen is also a container, but uh, so be it, which means it could be considered a display object. Uh, that's right, yeah, because we add it, but then the pen stays still, paper gets under underneath it, and that allows us to have multiple papers and do things with them, like make layers. Remember that one thing that we looked at uh, called Gen Pen with its different layers? It's actually the same pen, the layers are different papers, and that allows us to swap uh, the height of those and alpha of them and blend modes, etc. Alrighty, ba -doop, ba -doop. Um, so we're cloning the paper. We're setting bounds on it. Uh, the paper itself, I think, is a shape or could be a shape. Shapes don't have bounds unless we actually set them. So we're, we're saying, hey, make it the stage width and the stage height. That's all we really need there. And then scale it negative one in the X and keep the one in the Y. Don't do it like this. Don't scale negative one or SCA, that is. Um, because that would be applied to both the x and the y directions. And so if we want to just flip it horizontally rather than on the diagonal, if we want to flip it horizontally, that's how you would do it. And then we're locating that because its registration point now is on the right hand side rather than the left. We're locating it at the stage width right over here and zero in the height. And that basically adds that second one. So here's the first one that we drew. We clone it, boop, and it. And we clone it and add it, and it um, makes that. Fun. We started off when we made this. We tried mirroring it, in, in well, it is mirrored, but you can see that it, it isn't a direct mirror. So, so we didn't chop it and have one half of it here and one half of it here. It's it's the whole thing is just flipped and overlaid on top. So there's a couple different options we could have done with that, and we did try mirroring it and the way you would mirror it is you would put a mask so you would make a mask on half of it and then that would the mask would be black and it would hide the thing underneath it and the mask would also show only this half of the reflected side uh, but yeah it looked okay it just wasn't really necessary i don't think it, it, it filled out better when we had everything everywhere so we didn't bother it's just a little bit more work, a little bit more processing. We didn't need it, and so we, we didn't do it. Could have mirrored. The other thing we could do is apply blend modes on that as well. So this is the paper. We could apply blend mode, something like dot. If we just say dot bleh for a blend mode, then here's what it would look like. It would be, by default, a difference blend mode. So there's the difference blend mode in there. That was a very short one, wasn't it? <laughs> looks cool. But there's the difference effect. You see that? How the colors are the same and therefore we start getting black on the reflection. Now let's get one that's a bit more involved. So it kind of shows these sort of choppy little difference things. If the color's the same, it goes black. And we found that that tended to knock right through to the background and look a little bit awkward, like it was slightly tattered or something. But there's different types you could do as well. Uh, for instance, color-burn here. Um, and that, that would be a different blend mode effect on that. It's not bad. So it's not bad. And we considered including that as part of the rarity, you know, that effect. But in the end, just chose not to. But it could have been there. 
Uh, by the way, these are all short chainable things. Well, some of them, these ones are short chainable. You can apply those in different different ways. We could in Zim say pen dot paper dot scale x is equal to minus one, and that would take the place of that. The loc could be pen dot paper dot x is equal to stage width. Pen dot paper dot y is equal to zero. Okay, so you don't have to do the chaining there. Uh, but we find that the chaining is usually uh, faster and easier. So we made um, short chainable methods for all of the traditional transformations, such as rot, rot for rotation, ska for scale, uh, alp for alpha, loc pose for um, positioning x and y, and ske <laughs> for skew. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, uh, and there's a bunch more that you can see in the docs again. So here's the docs and under the methods, those are methods. So here's our methods. And here's a bunch of short chainables. Pose, loc, move, that's relative movement, ska, alp, viz, bleh. It's for the blend mode, etc., etc., etc. Top, bot, for and or changing the height of it, sort of shadows. Uh, there's ske, skew things. Okay, they're just short little wrappers that return the object and that makes them chainable and we don't have to drop out of chaining and that makes Zim very uh, easy to use. We just change half the time we're not even saying what we've just made pen and this, uh, often we're just we don't even store it in a variable because we just chain all this stuff on it turns out we need the pen later so we had to store it in a variable but uh, many times we just chain everything without a variable cuts down on the code okay so what else are we doing here now we're making the eyes so we're tiling a couple circles so here's a, a radius of 50 I don't know why I bother oh I pulled that out because we were probably doing something else with the radius yeah when we make the iris we use the radius again so we abstract that to a variable and um, use it in multiple places. Uh, if there is an iris, then we're looping 10 times. So this is a Zim loop, loop 10 times. We're given the i, we're given the total. Do I ever use the total? Yeah, there. Okay, so we're dividing 180. Uh, we're making the line go right across the i, the radius times two. And therefore we don't need 360 divided, we only need half of them, 180, and that's us uh, setting the alpha on those things. This is one eye, and then there's another eye, although we suppose we could have cloned it probably and dropped it in there. But that's us looping and making the iris. Here we're tiling two uh, by one, so two columns, one row, 100 spacing for the 100 spacing in the X, that is, uh, we only have one row, so that won't matter. So that's a, those yellow eyes, we're centering it on the stage and we're moving them up a little bit. So that centered them on the stage, but then we move them up. That's the yellow eyes that we've got going on in there. Here's the irises, which is those little lines that are in there, rotating those around. And here is another tile that are the two black uh, circles. So those are the pupils, a little bit smaller than the 50. Probably should have based that on the radius, like half of it or something like that. Um, same deal, just uh, tiled a little bit wider. Probably hard-coded that, I don't know. And we move those up as well. If it's astral, that means it's got lids. So that's most... Oh, if it's not astral, it's got lids. All right, okay. If it's astral, we don't have lids. But if it's not astral, then we do have lids. So we made a couple lids, which was tiling a circle. The trick behind that was... We have a percent on the circle. Percent means only make it 40%. That's why it's a semicircle. Uh, yeah. And, or whatever part of a circle. We're locating that. And we did what to it? We moved it and we rotated those lids. So the first item in the tile, we rotated 20. And the second item, we rotated minus 20. That's us getting the two items that just I don't know, was a bit custom custom there we probably could have tiled the new circle and thrown in a dot rote here uh, and made a series but we would may have had, I can't remember if we have to define the series up above like 20 
minus 20, something like that. And then the first one would have been rotated that, and the second one would we just rotated after. I think we had a problem doing that, but anyway, after 1.5 seconds, so this again is after the whole timeout of making this. So note that this timeout is within that. That's the end of the uh, the time there. Uh, we're taking, we're waiting a little bit longer, 1.5 seconds after we think we're done, and we do an FX preview. So that's the Zim timeout. It's much like a set timeout, except the time comes first. It's in seconds, and then we call the function, or that's the function that gets called. And note that uh, that um, FX hash up here has that function available uh, right here. I don't know how it parses that, but it does something to parse that. If it's not an FX hash, it just console.logs to say um, that, and that's why we see this FX hash trigger preview. Um, if it is an FX hash, I think they parse that and turn it into a proper preview function. Okay, that's it. Woohoo! Yay, we did it. And so this has been a making of. So uh, there, I'm Dr. Abstract. I hope you enjoyed it. Come to zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. Have a great day. Cheers.